we are known as a nation of animal lovers. The British countryside is rich with rare and wonderful wildlife. But crimes against the natural world are on the rise. Specialist law enforcement teams are dedicated to catching the poachers, cracking down on illegal blood sports, and stopping the international trafficking of endangered species. Still got the danger scene. The Wildlife Patrol is on the front line in the battle against one of Britain's fastest growing crimes. Tonight, the Strathclyde police are tracking down illegal snares. Found some wire cutters here, which shows evidence that people are snaring in here. At Heathrow, a large shipment of frogs has arrived for inspection. Pull your boat, mate. And in Yorkshire, the hunt for suspected poachers turns up a surprising find. You've no reason for being up here, other than other than for lamping. The South Lanarkshire area of Scotland is home to some large grouse and pheasant estates. But foxes and birds of prey kill expensive game birds that people pay large sums to shoot. So landowners and gamekeepers use animal burial sites, or stink pits, to lure the predators away. This practice is legal as long as livestock aren't used and any snares placed nearby are humane. Charlie Everett from the National Wildlife Crime Unit and Joe Connolly from Strathclyde Police are worried a burial site in local woodland might be breaking the law. When we were here earlier on, we found that unfortunately a sheep carcass had been used on this which is illegal and also there were some illegal snares set. So we want to come along again today just to see if it's been used since. We're really trying to establish who owns or who uses this stink pit. That's still a wee bit of a mystery for us. Okay. With predators likely to be attracted from miles around, proving who's responsible is going to require meticulous investigation. Here we are, here, here it's here. Right, it should be just be straight through, I think, yeah. Was that there before? I can't remember. I don't think it was. This looks like sheep, and this was sheep, wasn't it, when we were last here? Yeah. And that hasn't been removed, it's still there, and that is uh, the bit which causes us concern. Foxes and rabbits are quite legitimate here, and I think fish here, and fish is legitimate to put down as well. It just goes to show the extent in which they're willing to go to to prefer, try to create the stench to draw in the predators. To prevent the outbreak of diseases like foot and mouth, by law, sheep carcasses have to be properly disposed of. This is a crime scene, so what we would do is be looking around to see what clues we've got to see who might be operating this particular stick bit. And Joe's discovered more evidence of illegal activity. There's a dead fox here. But the worrying thing is, there's a snare sticking out its back end here. Foxes will come in with the, the smell of the carcass, the rotten flesh, the carcasses. And as the foxes come in, round about the stink pit will be snares. Foxes will get caught in a snare. Now, a snare's just a restraining device. So the snares have to be checked once every 24 hours. So whoever put the snares out to catch the foxes comes along, have a fox in it, they'll shoot the fox, and that's fine. Um, but the worry is when the snares are not checked, once every 24 hours. Now, of course, you might argue, well, the fox is going to be shot anyway, but it's a matter of cruelty, and, and that's really the point, that if the foxes have been dispatched by shooting, then it's not cruel. This is the grim reality, death, and our job now is to try and find out who it is who's causing this. The Animal Reception Centre at Heathrow is responsible for monitoring the health and welfare of the thousands of live animals that are being transported across or through our borders every week. 
It's estimated there are around 8 million reptiles and amphibians kept as pets in the UK. Today, assistant manager Susie Perry is checking over a shipment on its way from Florida to a British pet dealer. This is the Royal Pythons, and um, they're captive bred colour morphs. So that's just a hatchling, a Royal Python. Exotic species like pythons can bring in all kinds of infections and diseases. The staff here are working to find out where the threat of bacteria is coming from. Nice fecal sample sat on top, so I'm just going to take that for salmonella testing and typing. I mean, all reptiles will carry it, but we're looking at the types of salmonella coming in and um, uh, whether import, uh, you know, importing reptiles is bringing in kind of um, the nastier types of salmonella, really, um, and possible sources of infection. Salmonella is easily passed on to humans, and more virulent strains can lead to serious diseases like typhoid fever. Susie's sending the excrement off for analysis by a laboratory. With hundreds of frogs plus the odd spider in this shipment, she wants to make sure the way they've been packaged isn't causing any welfare issues. <laughs> These are um, horned frogs, which is one of my favourites. Just quite, quite a daft animal, really. They're just ridiculously lazy. I mean, they. They don't do anything at all. You just sort of sit them in peat like this and put them in a nice big enclosure. They won't use it. They've got very little legs. They're, they're not good swimmers. They're quite, they drown quite easily. The shipment also contains a large quantity of spotted tree frogs native to Madagascar. Although transporting them in soft drink bottles might look strange, it's perfectly legal. But the 10-hour journey has proved too much for some of them. That's unfortunate. We've got a bottle of tree frogs here. And all of them are dead. The problem with packaging them like this is that when you get one die, they excrete toxin and they basically kill all the others. So that's probably what's happened here. We've lost one or two just to being in transit. And uh, the whole there's 100 head in here that's gone. Oh, bar one. That was lucky. So I'm just going to package him separately and see if he'll fit in the box. Occasional mortalities are a byproduct of the international pet trade. But this shipment meets all the regulations, so Susie gives it the green light to continue on to its destination. But now a rare exotic cat has just come off a flight from Frankfurt, and its behaviour is causing concern. Uh, this is a golden cat, um, quite stressed and aggressive one at that. Susie's worried about the animal's welfare. She needs to investigate if anything is wrong with it. Yorkshire is home to some of the most scenic countryside in Britain, from the Dales to the North Yorkshire Moors, and it's a haven for all kinds of wildlife. Unfortunately, though, rural crime is an ongoing problem. Wildlife crime officer Mark Winter is heading out on patrol. There's hundreds and hundreds of square miles uh, of farmland. It's just a really pleasant place to be. But unfortunately, it gets hit by crime. There's an incidence of poaching as well around here. We've had cattle um, shot uh, and, and taken for the meat. To combat the poachers, tonight the South Yorkshire Police are launching Operation Dunlin. It's a huge undertaking with over 50 police officers covering an area of 600 square miles. That's the map of the purely poaching incidents in South Yorkshire. So there's a lot of rural crime going on. Anything that's moving around, anything that looks suspicious, let's stop it, let's find out who's moving about and let's look for those offences proactively.
The 18 patrol vehicles involved in the operation will be supplemented by five road crime units. Wildlife crime officer Mark Winter and PC Stuart Barton are heading to the Peniston area, where over the last few weeks there's been several reported poaching incidents. Your main thing with your poachers, you'll have the air guns. Uh, air guns and dogs. The poachers often use high-powered lamps to locate their prey. Already, Mark thinks he might have spotted something suspicious. Yeah. Just a lamp just in the distance. You could just see the beam sort of going up towards the sky. You know, we can see the beam sort of um, coding, if that's the right word. So I'm just going to head back right, see whether we can cut them off and just see how far away they are from, from the road from that side. Mark and Stuart now have to try and catch up with the lampers before they escape into the night. Back in South Lanarkshire, Charlie Everett and Joe Connolly are investigating an animal burial site or stink pit used to attract predators that prey on game birds from local shooting estates. Oh, just watch your feet there, Charlie. He says getting stuck. Yep. Animal burial sites are legal if they don't contain dead livestock. By law, any snares placed nearby can't be designed to injure an animal. This is where the snares were set before. You see the gap to let the animal through and the snare would have been here. So there's always a risk that the animal either could have gone through one of the gaps or if it was big enough to jump over, jump over and end up strangling itself on the fence. Charlie's uncovered what could be a vital piece of evidence. Found some wire cutters here, which obviously useful when you're trying to cut an animal away out of a snare. And it saves you having to get your hands too close to an animal that's going to be writhing away, um, trying to break free from a snare. So we're going to take those, which shows, again, evidence that people um, are snaring in here. Now it's up to the police forensic lab to check the wire cutters for fingerprints. Meanwhile, Joe's also come across evidence that it's not just foxes that have been targeted here. Uh, the remains of a bird. Um, it's difficult to say at the moment what it is. There's very little of it remaining. We're not going to get anything from that, no. but I think it's fair to assume that we're looking at a potentially shot bus. Shooting buzzards or any other bird of prey is a criminal offence and can lead to a fine of up to £10,000 or a year in jail. But reported incidents are on the rise and finding the perpetrators is notoriously difficult. The state of decomposition is such that we're not going to get anything forensically from it. If we put this in for examination, the being wouldn't be able to draw any conclusions. But it's when you start putting it together with everything else that we're still finding in this wood, the, the pattern becomes clearer. If we can pin down who's actually using this stink pit, then it will be their snares, because you can't really use a stink pit without the snares, and they will take it from there. But So there's still a bit of work to do. At Heathrow's Animal Reception Centre, this rare golden cat is being transported from Frankfurt to Belfast Zoo as part of an international breeding programme. The cat is highly stressed and aggressive. Susie's concerned. They've um, covered up the ventilation with a finer wire mesh to make sure it's absolutely pour proof on this cat because what you don't want is this cat kind of reaching through. Um, for starters, it'll damage itself, and secondly, if it can bite someone through the bars, it will. It's really quite aggressive. So they've made it as, as dark and quiet as possible, but I'm just worried there's not enough ventilation to, to actually meet the legal requirements and allow enough airflow through um, for the animal to be able to regulate its own temperature. So. Susie doesn't want to traumatise the animal further by handling it. 
Animal welfare regulations specify that 20% of the surface area of the sides of the container should be open. If the container doesn't meet the specifications, the golden cat will miss its connecting flight and have to make an unscheduled overnight stop here. Are we good to go? He's got very little vent. I don't think he's got enough ventilation. If, it, if, if you can give me two minutes. It's just, it's just there, yeah. It's just at that 20% point for ventilation, so we're happy to, to let this go. Thank you. The last thing we want to do is to hold it up here and risk it missing its onward flight, because then potentially it's in its travelling container for, for a lot longer, or we may have to release it. And both of those scenarios are stressful for, for the animal. Um, so we're, we're, we're glad today that we've been able to get that onto its flight as planned. The golden cat can continue its journey. It will be ready to be released into its new enclosure at Belfast Zoo in just a few hours' time. Back in South Lanarkshire, Charlie and Joe were hoping the wire cutters they retrieved from the burial site would yield some vital evidence. They haven't been able to identify who's responsible for the illegal snaring, so for now, the investigation has come to a dead end. You go in there, you do your best, you pull away what you can, and you try and find the evidence, but sometimes the evidence is not sufficient to be able to take to the next level, you know, to take to a court to, in order to identify the individuals involved. It's just one of those things. What we'll continue to do is to monitor the area. It's an area that um, we're now aware of, and we'll continue to look as it to continue to investigate um, any offences that continue to happen there. And this particular case will always remain open, so that if any new evidence comes to light, then we'll be able to, to reinvestigate it. Whoever's doing it will no doubt commit crime again, and uh, then they might not be so lucky. South Yorkshire, the police have launched a major nighttime operation to crack down on rural crime. PC Stuart Barden and wildlife crime officer Mark Winter have spotted a bright lamp in a nearby field, which can be evidence that someone's out deer poaching. Before they apprehend their suspect, they decide to have a quick word with the local farmer. It just keeps going up with the tree. I thought it was somebody talking pheasant. Somebody that should be there. No problem. No problem. Cheers, thank Hello. you. We'd seen the light shine up into the trees, obviously somebody out lamping. Um, not all lampers are bad lads. Um, when we've checked it out with the farmer, it's somebody that should be there. Um, quite lawfully, with permission. Uh, probably one of the gamekeepers doing what they should be doing. Whether hunting deer, rabbits, hares or pheasants, poachers often use the cover of darkness to hide what they're up to. Stuart and Mark have spotted a car full of men parked up in a nearby country lane. What way are we, lads? Sorry? What way are we? No way. No? Well, that's wrong answer. Knock your engine off, fella. And what we've been shooting with? Oh, no, we've been shooting with. Sorry? We've just been having a drive, haven't we? Have you? Yeah. Doing what? What now? Just been at the shooting. Have you? Yeah. yeah. So where's guns? Oh. Let's have a look. Pull your boot, mate. <sighs> On inspection, it turns out that the guns are in fact air rifles. The men insist they've been shooting elsewhere with the permission of the landowner. Without it, they'd be committing a criminal offence. I know it all looks a little bit uncouth and a little oh, bit... Oh, yes. And I, I, don't, I don't blame you for thinking that, but I can assure you there's not, there really is not. You've no reason for being up here? Other than... Other no, than for lamping. You've got anything sharp on you? No, 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 Nothing? No. The men deny they've been shooting here 
And with no evidence of any dead animals, Stuart and Mark decide not to make an arrest. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. A record of this search is going to be kept, OK? I'll tell you what else I'm going to do as well. I'm going to take those air rifles and I'm going to check that they're not Section 1 firearms. If they're checked out, fine, you'll get them back, OK? The confiscated air rifles will be taken for ballistic tests to make sure they conform to firearms legislation. The men are free to go on their way. In the defence, the guns were in the sleeves or in the boot of the car. They hadn't got them with them or they hadn't got immediate access to them, so... Uh, we'll just give them a little bit of inconvenience, have the guns off them for a, a week or two and uh, play it that way. And we'll keep running operations and we'll keep trying to get that message out there that, you know, if you are committing rural crime and on land where you shouldn't be or if you're poaching and whatever, it's inevitable that we are going to catch you. It's as simple as that, really. Operation Dunlin has been a success. Across South Yorkshire, 63 vehicles have been stopped and checked, three of them have been seized for various offences, and there have been three arrests for drink driving. After testing, the confiscated air guns were found to be legal and have been returned to their owners. Next time on Wildlife Patrol, the crackdown on the suspected badger baiters. We've got the dogs, we've got the, the suspects, and we're now just going to do scenes of crime on the site. The wild bird that's being reintroduced to Britain after an absence of almost 200 years. And staff at Heathrow have got their hands full with a rare exotic bird. That's what I was rather hoping wasn't going to happen.